If you wanted a new gaming console back in 2005, but didn't want to be restricted to a large CRT or perhaps even an LCD TV if you were really fancy, there were a few options out there. Firstly, there was the new PlayStation Portable and Nintendo DS, but there was another option, arguably not even mobile. With this, the Joytech 8 inch LCD display for the PlayStation 2 Slim. Released around 2005 for the PS2 Slim, these offered a literal bolt on display to your PlayStation 2, and were available in either black or silver to match the colors of the PS2. These were produced by the Joytech company, a manufacturer and supplier of third party video game peripherals. Stuff like controllers, pouches, cases, chargers, display cables, racing wheels. You name it and they likely sold it. They were quite well known in the early to mid 2000s, as they were one of the big companies like Mad Cats and Big Ben. However, they have now completely vanished from the market. What happened to them? Joytech was founded by Lee Ginshert in 1996, who had previously founded LDA Distribution, a distributor of video games. Initially located in Windsor, England, during their early years they gained market share at a rapid pace, and by their own words became, in 1998, the largest supplier of third-party console peripherals in the UK. Things really started to get moving on the 3rd of February 1999, when all three shareholders sold their shares to none other than Take-Two Interactive. Yes, that Take-Two Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games. Take-Two reported to have paid £200,000 for LDA and the subsidiary Joytech. Take-Two hoped to bring the European success of Joytech to the United States. Ginchard commented, With Take-Two's worldwide distribution strength, we hope to replicate internationally the leading position we have achieved in the United Kingdom. And they did indeed expand their operations to many countries outside of the UK. Business proceeded after the acquisition with new products for the PlayStation 2, Nintendo DS, PlayStation Portable and so on. They even teamed up with the Williams F1 team to make an F1 inspired racing wheel. Doug really helped us in the early stages of getting the actual overall outlook of the product correct so that the authenticity was actually maintained right throughout. When it came to the next stage, which is building the electronics and how the mechanics would work of the wheel, um, it was very much down to the Joytech R&D staff who came up with those ideas and those principles. But the main thing was to make the product look very similar to the, the actual racing wheel. Um, but uh, I mean, the, the problem, one of the problems would be also to keep costs down and to make it practical to make. With the growing online market, they also launched their own web shop in 2006. Nevertheless, despite their efforts, on September 6, 2007, Take-Two sold Joytech with all its assets, staff included, to rival manufacturer Madcats, in a move of the 100-day plan to develop strategic alternatives for any operation that we determined to be outside of our core publishing business. Madcats reportedly paid $3.7 million. To better understand the situation, I delved into Joytech's financial reports, and a rather bleak image emerged. Looking at the entire turnover, we can see that, following the T2 acquisition just before the millennium, business went well afterwards, going from £1 million turnover in 2001 to well over £5 million in 2004. However, just plotted against the cost of sales alone, it becomes clear that they made nearly no margin at all. Especially considering the cost of sales was only around 72% of the entire costs. As a result, looking at the profit or loss, we can see that between 2001 and 2007, they lost money every year. This was likely a very big factor in why Take Two eventually sold them. Interestingly, Take-Two still owns the Joytech company, 
although it is now listed as a dormant company and still has over 13 million pounds in current liabilities. And for now that is unfortunately where the Joytex saga ends, especially considering that all the assets and stuff that went into Mad Cats, which filed for bankruptcy in, back in 2018. However, for now let's turn back to Joytex peak period, where they lost the least amount of money, and have a look at one of their best and most noteworthy products they ever put out, the PS2 Slim LCD display. Actually, the redesigned PlayStation 1 had a first party display add-on from Sony themselves, However, with the PS2 they didn't make any. Third party manufacturers step in with various rates of success like this truly shocking example from Big Ben. Luckily Joytech got it right. Launched around mid-2005, this 8-inch digital LCD monitor would have changed hands for around 160 US dollars and came in both silver and black. On the front we have an 8-inch TFT LCD display with a for then class leading resolution of 640x480. While low for modern gaming standards, it is only on 8 inches of size, which makes it actually quite sharp and perfect for the PS2, which would often run games at 480i or 480p, so it's really all you need. The color reproduction and contrast, while nothing fancy, are still quite adequate given its age. The speakers sound decent and get quite loud, but are definitely lacking bass even despite their SRS certification. Even when hooking up to a headphone or external speakers, which you can do via one of the two headphone jacks for doing some split screen gaming. There are buttons on the front for entering the menu where you will find basic controls for color, brightness, volume and so on. And lastly there is also an infrared receiver for the included remote control. On the back there is simply the Joytech logo. Now let's turn to see how it connects. Firstly there is an extra connector for connecting other accessories to the PlayStation. To the right of that is the DC input. The display uses the standard PS2 power supply, which then powers both it and the PS2. And then there is a cutout made for the network and optical audio port. Finally on the right there is the standard PS2 AV out connector, so you can still hook it up to a television, at which point the display will simply act as a path through. The entire unit is only held on with two screws, which you can screw in from the back. Undoing these screws you can now see how this unit attaches. So how is it to use then? Well, it's very nice. I've primarily been using the Black PS2 for a couple of years now actually, to enjoy some classic titles like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. It's nice to just kick back with a nice cup of coffee and do some classic gaming also while not being restricted to a television. The screen, while not huge, is just fine to play on if you sit relatively close to it, like I'm doing here sitting at the dining room table. It also doesn't have the problem of input lag, like you get with modern TVs and their image processing. What's really nice is that, because of the compact size, you can just easily put it away and in a convenient location, just like in a drawer here. And you don't have to change anything to your TV setup. And that was all for you I have today. If you have liked this video, please do leave a like. And if you want to be kept up to date on future videos, why not consider subscribing? If you have a comment, please leave it below or reach out to me on Twitter. Well, that was all for now, and bye bye.